guys happy friday happy happy friday yay i hope everyone's looking forward to a lovely relaxing weekend and you've had a beautiful week today we have my oh, just wonderful family joining us we've got my beautiful beautiful sister sasha stafford uh, and we also have her daughter ella Ella Lollipop. We also have my mum because they're all chilling on Magnetic Island and I asked them to come back on and hang out with us. So I'm, I'm not going to muck around any anymore. I'm just going to bring Sash right into the room and yeah, a happy Friday. Hey. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I got butterflies. Whee. Hi Sash. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Ella put it on mute. I Is that can what hear you? you. Yes, that's it. That's the one. Hello, oh, oh. you know, my beautiful sister. <laughs> How are you? I'm missing you, gorgeous. It's been too long. From oh. LA to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. I just realised we're almost matching. Oh, we are. See, we psychically chose the same outfit. I didn't even notice that when we were chatting before. It's literally not, it's almost the same. That's so cool. <laughs> Except I don't, I don't have as cool a glasses as you. 
I know. I know. I know this go. is happening to getting old, darling. Don't <laughs> We're still hot. <laughs> hot mamas. Hot mamas, babe. Hot mamas all the way. What have you been up to? Um, just, oh, look, darling, we're very blessed in Australia, but doubly blessed on my gorgeous island. As a, as I told you guys last time, there's only 2,000 people that live on this tiny little island in the Barrier Reef. So with what's happening on the planet at the moment, even compared to the rest of Australia, we're very, very blessed. Um, just surrounded in nature and still able to live our lives and be out there and everything, you know what I mean? Um, painting my little bottom off as usual. Good and, girl. Yeah, missing all of you guys and um, just living the dream, my love, living the dream. Uh, so uh, I, I, before we went live, Sash said that she was going to tell us a wicked tale about her painter's overalls and I'm like, ooh, are you going to get our channel <laughs> shut down? Okay, okay. Going to that photo. Oh, which, which okay so also the uh, another fun fact is before <laughs> before but i said oh you guys want to say that mum and such go oh we'll send you through a couple of photos i was like okay and then i like uh, half an hour before the plethora of i think my computer's never going to recover there's like a hundred million photos so we're going to attempt to try and show them but the funny thing is, is that sash can't see what we're looking I at can't so see them, my darlings. we try to set up twitch separate i'm really a technophobe my darling so we but anyway <laughs> it doesn't matter we'll have fun and that's what it's about <laughs> jake's we'll in the room the story okay so these overalls i've been painting in since i was 18 since i was 18 and i turned 47 this year wah, wah, wah. anyway <laughs> and the story is with these overalls is every lover I've had in my life. Ooh. I write their initials somewhere on the overalls. And then when the relationship is over, I paint over them. I paint over the initials. But some initials keep shining through. They have to be painted over a few times. Ooh. But yes, here we go. Many, many, many names. Now, is, has Sooty made the overalls? Because now that she's... Nice. Why would I put my dog on there? Well, That's because she's, like, she's at the love of your life at the moment. She's oh, your, your bestie. Do besties, do besties get to go on there or only, only your lovers? Only no, lovers, darling. Oh, no, I, I thought like people that you like just liked as well. So I, I didn't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> purely purely romantic lovers, you mean? Oh. Right. Uh, do you, I think you're going to need a few more paintbrushes there. I just saw Ella ducking in behind. What are you working on now? Um, okay, so so as we've talked before, my darlings, predominantly what I did was all the female nudes. That's what I was known of my whole life. But since COVID, my bread and butter have been these amazing sketches. And I've even got some beautiful um, commissions off friends of yours through this, my darling, including the gorgeous Joanna Junior Reed, who I'm going to do jo very well. Yep, Joe's yep. here. Yeah, hi, hi Jo. Hi, darling. Hi from Australia. Um, anyway, so... Predominantly in the past, I do these big female nudes. But what I'm doing now with COVID, as we, we touched before, is, oh, there's the dog. I, so, I see Sooty, I see Sooty. And um, oh. I will bring her in. <gasps> Sooty. Hi, Ella. Hi. Now, you've got to hold her up because my face is blocking her because I'm, I'm on the bottom. Yeah, so you okay. hold her up a bit. Oh. Hold her up. Hold her up with my oh, face. Oh, she's. Hi, Sooty. Hi. Hi. Put her over a little bit so we can see over her. This side. Over that side. Ah. And <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so cat, cute. Cat set some very trendy bandanas oh. last week. These are bees. Bumblebees. Bees. Nice yes. look. Oh, I'm going to put the cactuses ones on for in honour of America. Do you have a lot of cactus over there? But the cacti. <laughs> and I did. Cacti. <laughs> she's more like a cat, I have to say. But you've got to admit, my darlings, anyone who has pets, they really are unconditional love, aren't they, Jeej? They yes. don't care. They live totally for us. They don't care if they're old or young or fat or skinny or rich or poor. They just live totally in the moment. And, you know, that's why we just love being connected to animals. They remind us what it's all about and to have fun with life as well and to live in the moment. So she's a very beautiful, beautiful dog and I'm very blessed. But anyway, Aww. so the main, main thing I'm doing at the moment now is people will send me a photo of their whatever they want me to do. So I'm getting a lot of cute grandkids and stuff like that. Then, so I think I might have showed this last time. So here's a photo of Jasper, my beautiful son who's off playing football right at the moment. Who's we meant still, to be yes, we're still trying to lure him onto the show to, okay. to show us how to kick a footy. He's almost 14, but, you know. And so that's a photo of that. Then I've done a grid of that. And then 
you change the grid to create that, you see? That's yeah. amazing. So this is what I'm working on at the moment of three sisters, three sisters. Wow. And then we see that it's coming along. That's here. beautiful. <gasps> oh, wow. How long does it take you to do each one? Uh, I mean, obviously they still it changes. take me a while. They still take me about a week. Um, I don't want to rush them and especially, you know, it's, it's important that they look good and they're beautiful. But I'm very, very honoured and it's it's sort of weird. I think some with some people, and with what you're doing at the moment and everything, is that COVID corona is actually forcing us to do what's really our true song and our true soul. You know, yeah. there's no way I would have been doing all this art if it wasn't for what's happening on the planet. So we've got to endeavour to try and see the light side out of it. And, and there is always light. There is always light, my darling. Thanks, Sasha. You've always been a big inspiration in my life and you've always taught me how to, to breathe and not to worry so much. Um, you got a, you got a really cool mum, Ella. You lucked out. She's in there. Uh, oh, she's the most beautiful girl. She was doing my makeup this morning and I started crying. But then, as we've said before, I am a crier. The yoga teacher said it's not a good yoga class unless Sasha cries. I'm like, I love you so much, Baba. You're amazing. Hey, Captain, Captain Calvin wants to, he says he can't draw anything to save his life. How did Sasha learn painting like that? Okay, so this is, this is an interesting story. I actually don't Every, know. Everyone can be arty, all right? Some people have a natural flair, obviously, like some people have a natural flair for whatever talent, right? But I remember when I, darling, just be quiet for a second. When I was um, 25, I went and studied art in Greece. And I was the only Australian, and actually all the others were Americans. Darling, it's me. And, um, <laughs> and uh, it's all about me, me right now, darling. Um, uh, anyway, and all the others were Americans. And none of the others were uh, professional artists. They were just doing it as a little thing to do in, in between university things and stuff like that, you know, like a four-month course. And at the beginning of it, some of the stuff I'm looking at going, oh, my God. But by the end of four months of every day, life drawing, sketching, doing all this, like everything. The more you do, the better you get. Yeah. So what I suggest to people who want to start getting into art, get a little get a little notepad like this. And you don't want to start with something huge like this. You start with get something very, very simple. Find an apple or something like that. Just take a little piece of paper and pencil everywhere you go. Just sketch. Start really basic, really basic. An apple a chair, don't get a huge canvas and dive into that first. Just take your little sketchbook everywhere and do it like that. And the big trick is too, don't try and sit there and be like, ooh, this is this and this is that. Be loosey-goosey, loosey-goosey. Do you understand? So just let it flow. There's no mistake. So if you're doing like um, in life drawing what they'll do, and you know this, Gigi, you used to be a life drawing model many moons ago, um, is that um, they make you move every 30 seconds so you're uh, doing a new position, so it's free. So rather than... So you have to just keep, keep, keep drawing the different positions? Yeah, but just quickly and loose. All right, so we've got this pot here. So this little pot there, hold it up, Ella. So you're just like, oh, okay... <laughs> wow, that's amazing that how fast you did that. A little thing there. Da, 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 da. But you know, just be Lucy. 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 <laughs> but don't be too. Oh my God, it's this side, it's this side. Well, that's, that's a good. That's a good lesson for life, really, isn't it? Like, just, it's... just, there's no mistakes. Just enjoy, just be, be spontaneous, have fun with it. And it's like, um, it's like I think that big lesson, we get a lot of lessons for yoga, um, Jeej. Everything yes. is that balance between effort and ease, yin and the yang, dark and the white, magic and science. I've always said that. Life is that balance between magic and science. You don't want to be too hippy-dippy and floating away into the never-ever, and you don't want to be too analytical and left brain. We want all that balance. Yes. That's what life's about. Yeah. I found yoga... I like fell into it accidentally in Farscape days because the makeup girls were going and because you know I was besties with all the makeup and hair chicks and I was like oh yeah whatever you know it was, it's a hangout time and it, that was without the heat and stuff that was just normal yoga for the longest time and it just immediately changed my life because it teaches us how to be present doesn't it 
And I think, geez, too, because you and I, or everyone in our families are very blah, 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 blah. We're pretty intense, full-on people. So it helps us calm. It is great with the breathing because we can be all blah, 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 blah. And also, I'm sorry, but I'm almost 47 and most women don't have arms like that at 47. So yoga is just, it does. It keeps you lovely, long, strong, lean. It's just changed my life. It's absolutely yeah. changed my life. I agree. And also... Uh, something that a lot of people don't know uh, if they're not into yoga is that it cleanses your internal organs as well, doesn't it? Because all of the positions are actually designed to detox, detoxify yeah, so when, as you go. When, you, when you're doing twists and stuff, and, and I go to so much yoga. I even go to the one, the Thursday one, which is chair yoga at the community centre where people turn up in an electric wheelchair. It's all wow. good. I do that, but I also do the full-on sunrise one. I do the full-on one. And so it, it is doable for everyone. So in the chair yoga, they're just sitting there like that. Half the people are in wheelchairs and stuff, and you're just moving around, moving around, breathing in and up just on your chair. breathing, stretching. But the thing is also, Gigi, yoga works for us because we're hyper and it balances. But for some people, that's not their thing. Everyone's got to find their thing. Yeah, some everyone's got to find their... A boot camp dancing or maybe a team sport like football or something um i went to gyms and boot camp that's not me that's not me at all but you've got to find what your own thing is some people like tennis some people like hiking you know so you've just got to find your own thing and it's so important as i think a lot of us sometimes say oh i'm too busy i'm working or i'm looking after my kids makes you that feel so it. much better doesn't it you have to because as you get older if you don't honor yourself and look after yourself and, and keep your body and mind strong and, and balanced and taking time for yourself, then you can't be a functioning member of society and be good for those people around you. So it's not actually selfish. You need time to take time out for yourself and do your own thing. And whether that's spending a whole day in bed or going and getting a massage, however you want to spend it in bed. Um, <laughs> well, don't listen, Ella. <laughs> I'm How sure she's heard it all. Say some things. Oh, she's used to how Come I Come in, Baba. <laughs> so what do you think of mum? How's how's island life? What's going on? Uh, not much at the moment because Corona and stuff. Mum, crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good girl. Hey, did you just get a haircut? Yeah. She did it herself. Oh, it looks amazing. Have you ever dyed your and hair? No, she wants to, it's I won't. Be but, but it's a and, um, beautiful colour. It's a beautiful colour. She's on here. She lost her, um, she, remember she had the, uh, she broke her arm from BMXing with the boys, so that's gone off. But she's also had a birthday and she's 12, and I think she is now taller than me at 12. Oh, my gosh. What did you do for your birthday? Oh, I haven't done anything yet. Oh, no. Well, I know, I saw there was party we photos. We had some friends over here and you had a water balloon fight. And you had some yummy food. Yeah. What what do you what do you want to do? What would be the ultimate? I wanna go ice skating or do what's it called? Um what is it? Silks. You know, when you're up in the air. Yes. The yes. They've yeah. started it in, they've started it in town, so we thought we might go over there with a couple that of That sounds friends. that sounds so much fun. You know that and they also do it at the circus schools and stuff as well, where they do the silks and the hoops and the bungees and stuff like that. Have you shown photos of you on here before on Twitch when you were doing the trapeze? No, not oh, yet. Oh, she's so good, guys. So, Cappy, Gigi and Jake, when they were living in Sydney. See, when I was pumping out babies and they were still having fun and running around. I totally around, forgot you know? about all that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was being all mum up here and boring. And they were, um, you would do all these amazing things. And they did this trapeze school, the circus school. And you were amazing, Gigi. You were amazing. Sash. Beautiful. I love it because it's like your yoga too. You're just free. And when you're flying, it just feels so good. And I also think it's good getting upside down. I think it's very therapeutic, something okay. about it. I don't well, know Well, they what. say it's very good for um, inversions, they call them. In yoga as yeah. well, that's why people headstands and backbends and horn stand and stuff is because putting your blood into your head is moving it all around. Oh, and what you were saying before too, yes, when you're doing the twists and things like that, it's moving old blood out of organs and letting fresh blood go in. So it's moving it all around. So, yeah. But you've got to find your thing, guys. You've got to find your thing. Hey, okay. Ella Bella, 
So yeah. what's what's the vibe like? So are you in school? You're not in school? Has it changed because of everything going down? Or what's the what's the dealio? So I'm actually am going to school because we haven't had any cases on the island earlier. Really. And um, we have to still, like, try to social distance at parades and stuff like that, like sports carnivals. Do you take a and tape measure? We have to stay hygienic. <laughs> and one day when the water had stopped on the island, we couldn't go to school because we had to stay Yeah, we hygienic. talked about that last time. That's when you broke your arm. Oh, but yeah. But um, since, so, so for instance, they had their sports carnival two weeks ago and Ella won. Oh, my gosh. Everything. High jump, long jump. What? All the running, but we couldn't go and watch it. That's because you're so tall. Parents don't know how to go and watch it. So Why? Still... Because of because of COVID. Right. Oh, yeah. shut up! Sorry. <laughs> That's anyway. I'm. Still Couldn't you very, watch very... it and just stand far enough apart? I, I don't know. You've got to you've got to think. But anyway, so she she whipped it, won absolutely everything. But the great thing about it is she doesn't care. She doesn't care. She wouldn't That's have cared. Why? Just... Oh. Okay. Thank sorry. you, Stephanie. Sorry. Okay, you, you keep that. How did you go in all your sports things? Tell them about it. I won everything. You won That's everything. About it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I just we, won I, everything. And all the boys, the older boys, the oldest kids in our the school for all the boys, me and one other girl named Madison. Madison bet and their, I. Bet their I love... high jump score. Oh, yes, they beat the boys' high jump score. Oh, my the God. That's amazing. <laughs> we went up to one meter and 21 oh, one meter 21 and apparently that's, that's and crazy appa- apparently jake who we call yucky is very shitty because she beat his he, his he, record he's in the room he's listening there you go is that true yucky Aha, golden child you're going down yeah, child, ella's taking you down golden. yeah <laughs> uh Captain wants to know, Ella, what is your most favourite class in school and what was yours and Sasha's most favourite class in school? What was your most favourite class? So my favourite class was probably PE. That's um, sports. Really? Yeah, sports. Physical Physical education. education. Because we actually, or or Japanese. I like learning Japanese. Nihongo. (laughs) No mimas. Tabimas. No. (laughs) Ichinese. Ichinese (laughs) nyongo. Me um, go because we get to make food in Japanese. Like, do you learn any Japanese, or you just eat food in it? <laughs> and, and I like doing PE because I'm good at everything. So <laughs> we're very humble I enough because I beat everyone. Good. Oh, we were always terrible at PE, weren't we, Sash? We were yeah. not good. No, we no, were well, not you good. Were really good at hockey. Remember? I was okay at hockey and I was okay at, at swimming, but but then what happened is we moved from uh, Sydney to Brisbane uh, to uh, Gold Coast, and then I had to compete with the girls that were my age, even though I was went into the year below. Do you know what I mean? That's Did you have to do that as well? Yeah, yeah, I had to do that too. That sucks because you so get it's, you don't know them. I had to compete against. Wait, were they older or were they? Did I go into a class it's, it's alone? Age. It's age. No, no one the of reason them is older than yeah, me. yeah. But what Gigi's talking about is the reason is Gigi. We went from Sydney to I'm the Gulf, <laughs> and they finished school a year earlier. So we we ended up being the youngest people in our grade, but we would have to compete a pe- about against people a year older than us. But, but I remember me. when when we graduated, I was eighteen and no one else was, so I no. was the one. Yeah, everyone else was right? seventeen. We were eighteen. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got you, um, but I so, had to go to a lower class. Maybe that was because we were dumb, Sash. No, it wasn't because we were dumb. Because <laughs> we came from Sydney. Stop it. No, no up, so I, I hated sport. I was way too <laughs> cool for sport, which is hysterical because I was actually the sports captain and the house captain. Don't you and, say it, don't you say it. And, no. And, um, and, but all I used to do is um, wag sport and topless sunbake behind the gym and smoke cigarettes. So Did that you? was me. <laughs> No, but of course at school, uh, my favourite thing, of course, was art. And I remember um, actually at my um, my art teacher asking me, thinking I'd paid an art teacher, an art, an artist to do my final things of art. Oh. They, you know, that I'd actually paid an artist that I hadn't paid it myself, hadn't painted it myself. And my major thing, I remember yours too, G. To remember, was um, two scenes. One was in the a, a house and a lake. One in winter and one in summer, and I used watercolor. So if you put um, 
on watercolour, when it's wet, if you put salt on it, it makes it look like snow. So I had mm. one of the beautiful, all the flowers and the house and one with all the snow and everything. And I, I went really, really well. But they didn't believe I did it and I had to redo it. But what did you do for yours, Jeej? I remember what you did for yours. <laughs> The queen. the queen, the queen in a garter belt, eating a hot dog, wasn't she? Behind with a leg spread. With a leg spread. With leg split. <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> you did a lake in some nice houses going? with snow. <laughs> I don't know uh, why. I just I love to too. fuck with people's heads. Pardon me. I love to. I love to muck with people. I don't know why. It was just. I don't. I didn't. The normal stuff was just so boring. It was like, I mean, our art teacher was very cool. Did we have the same art teacher then? No, but I do remember, darling. So the best teacher I liked was Miss Bailey. She teach me. She taught me English and ancient history. And then when you, because you were four years younger than me, then when you were at the school, she taught you drama. Miss Bailey. Uh, and I, I remember you, you saying that she was running around going, let's be fairies, let's be fairies. And she was gorgeous and beautiful. I love your drum. What's your face? Wait, hey, where are you going? Go, so oh, just yeah, ask if she could go get eat. a snack. No, well, no, you're snacking. No, you're snacking. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. This is a serious business. <laughs> go and get a snack. Go, off you go. Um, uh uh, I liked English. I liked maths and I liked science, but then it did start moving too fast and I couldn't keep up. Oh, my and God. It, I had to um, – Jasper had a science test on Friday and I had to study with them all about protons and atoms and I'm so bad at that. No, no, no. We were, we were always switched on and not dumb, but we, it, we weren't really intellectuals. No, but I think a lot of the stuff that no, I teach at school that there. is – eating a packet of chips. <laughs> Just, all the chat rooms now hungry. Yeah, everyone wants a snack. They want they want donuts. They're saying no donuts. snack for you. Jake says no snack for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so I feel like, and also has a lot to do with what teacher you have because I was really good at English. I was getting like A minuses with Mrs. White, and then I had Mr. Chung. Uh, and I had Mrs. White for a couple of years and Mr. Chung took over and I went to C+. So I don't even know. It's so subjective too. But, but I also I mean? think, and this is this is a nice Incredible. insight into, uh, into our amazing Gigi is or fellow loving Gigi people. Is So I've always believed that a good school is not really about the school. It's about the group of children you have in that grade that you connect with. So as we all know, I've been very fortunate that all my friends from school are still really really good friends from myself now even since back then we were when we were 10 and I connected with them and like one was Bonnie who became Miss Australia and and third in Miss Universe and and I connected with these gorgeous people but it's like and I was always very popular and confident you were popular too but the thing was not really because she was so beautiful and she was so beautiful no I wasn't she was stop it it's a chubby little thing no you weren't all the girls in her year were sort of a bit jealous of her. So they were sometimes mean. I didn't have any friends. What are you talking about? I know, they about? were mean to her. They would pick <laughs> on her. Yeah. No, wait, wait. They were mean to her. They would, they would pick on her and, and, and they were I mean got a bit to bullied. her. And it was just because they were jealous of her. So she, And it was very obvious. So it's not about that. And then Cappy, the next one down from Cap me. was naughty. She was Still, it's not a good thing. And then, of course, Twitch people, because of Yaya's amazingness and Yaya teaching Jenny, teaching us about <laughs> spirituality and karma and everything, we realised how important it is that, that what you put out comes back to you. It does, and I, it always does. That's a big does. way we've lived our lives. A lot of people sit there and go, oh, wow, aren't they all fabulous? They're all out there doing stuff and, and thing. Yes, but one, of the, one thing that I think we've always had going for us, which is really important, is we don't have a filter. So we know we're fabulous, but we also know that we're not perfect, that we all lose it, that there's issues we're all learning on, but we own it and we put it out there and say, this is me. And that's what being a human's about. Nobody's perfect on this planet. And there's nothing wrong with just saying, I'm doing the best I can. You know, everyone on the planet is trying to do the best they can with the knowledge they have. So owning the fact that none of us are perfect and it's impossible to be perfect all the time. She, Cap used to go, uh, you won't be my best sister unless you do this or unless you do that. And she would put me up to all sorts of mischief. She was so naughty. And we remember we had Mark's uh, girlfriend who was teaching us French, remember? And Cappy would just harass her the whole time. And she taught us French and maths. And Cap would just it's be so like... Cute. It's so cute. Remember she did that um, thing. She was doing a recording, the old-fashioned tape recorder, 
while you were being tutored. And and you can hear her talking to the 18-year-old the girl and she's getting her to spell, you know, spell table. T-A-L, T, and, and she goes, no, no, Kathy, this is how you do it. And then you came, it was so cute. And you go, bonjour, madame. And you're in this little cute voice. And bonjour, she's going, madame. And she's going, Gigi, do this, do this. And then she's going, there's a bug in this room. There's a bug. Yeah, she's very <laughs> But um, no, that, that, that's the thing is we all have pluses and negatives. I think Gigi and I, because we are a day apart, our birthdays, even though four years apart, we're both we're scorpions. scorpions. And we, we realise that you can catch more flies with honey than vinegar. So it's mm -hmm. best to be charming and nice and that's how we do it. Whereas Cap was sort of like, here we go, right in there. And Mark was a bit like that. Remember what she used to do was so bad with Jake? We used to do this. So Jake's a lot younger than us. We'd line them up at the end as like baby Jake and all the rest of us would line along and go, come to me, come to me, come to me. Like mum, you, me and Cappy trying to get like who's the favourite, remember? Yep. Yep. That's so evil as if you and do that. And then we wanted, we wanted a little sister so we dressed Jake up and we called him Jane. That's right. <laughs> so don't think that dressing your kids up at a certain age is going to... We won't. We, put, we even put makeup on him. Yeah, yep. I've got that photo somewhere of Jane. We'll definitely have to pull him out with all his much hair. <laughs> Jake's in the room. He's growling. But I think of the thing with Jake. Jake is the only one out of all of us two who really he's is level-headed. Out of that, yeah. and I've always said this. I've always said this that I believe the reason is is because he basically got brought up with four mothers. So when you're brought up, which is all of us girls, because we're all a lot older. So mum and Cappy, Gigi and I. So I'm 10 I years older. I'm 14 years older and Cappy's 13 years older. So he's brought up with all this love of women. And I think that the biggest thing is, is the most important thing for children is that they just love. feel love. It love. doesn't really matter as long as they've got love and lots of love. Love, and love, love. love. Too, but we're more like, look at me, look at me, look at me. Whereas Jake's just sort of cool, sitting back, doesn't Jake's, need that. Jake's very level headed, whereas we're a, bit, a lot more emotional. Like, he's very logical and it's good because he, he's because he plays poker, he like weighs up the odds. So, when I'm losing it, I have to call him up because he I, he goes, Well, just you know, you've got to ask what the odds are. I was like, What do you mean? <laughs> my heart is gonna break and i feel like i'm gonna, I'm gonna like, he's like just just chill out <laughs> he's such a special beautiful boy and um it what was great is seeing him as a baby and then him growing up and then getting so much taller than all of us and i remember one time when you were on Farscape or something and i was i was a struggling artist and i'm crying and going oh jake i got money money and, he, and i remember he was this big and he's put his arms around it's such a difference from him being a little boy to being this beautiful young man he was probably only about 16 Thank or 17 you. and he's going it's all right sash we can't all be rich it's all right well, i don't know what <laughs> jackson it wasn't oliver <laughs> <laughs> pip pip cheerios <laughs> It's going to be all right, Gov. It's going to be all right, me lovey. <laughs> then, he turned, then, he, then he turned into a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jakey? Jakey the pirate. Uh, Jake, yucky the pirate. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, all right, what else can we tell you? Oh, um, oh, do you want to see some photos? Pop? Do you want... Huh? Oh, yeah, okay, yes, tell, give us a song, Red. give us a song. <laughs> and then, okay, well, there goes Ella. <laughs> oh, I found over her toe. Oh, <laughs> Bubba, are you okay? She's alright. She's alright, she's laughing. Alright, so she's going to sing us some songs. Child news. <laughs> right, I, I love singing like um, Cappy, like Gigi and Yucky as well. But I'm not as good as them because I was a dirty smoker for many years. Smoking's evil, never smoke. But also, I'm an artist. We've all got different things, and but I love singing too. So I'm just going to sing a little, little bit. I did sing a couple of weeks ago at the Muso Club on the island. We had the Muso Club, so that was good. So I'll just have a little drink. I'll get rid of me so it's just you, Sash. <clears throat> all right. I'm still here, but I'm clearing the screen of me. All right. So you're centre stage. Da, 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 da. Okay. So you're still there? <laughs> <laughs> Because I was a dirty smoker for so long, <laughs> very, very deep voice. It's not honey and beautiful like, like Gigi's gorgeous voice. I was a dirty smoker for many years. 
so honey and syrupy. Mine's, I don't know. I don't know, babe. I don't you think you're a sexy voice. <laughs> All right. So I love singing boy songs, but this is one by Tracy Chapman. So I'll just do a little bit a cappella style, all right? And so, so that you can say years go by and still words don't come easily like I'm sorry, I'm sorry, forgive me so that you can say probably go attitude Years go by and still words don't come easily. Like forgive me, forgive me. Then you could say, baby, baby, can I hold you tonight? Baby, if I told you the right words, ooh, at the right time, would you be mine? I love you. So that you can say Years go by and still Words don't come easily Ooh, Like I love you, I love you Then you can say baby Baby can I hold you tonight Baby if I told you the right words Ooh, at the right time, would you be mine? Would you be mine? Would you be mine? There we go, J. Joel. Yay! Ella, Ella, do you want to do a song? She's a very good singer. Oh, come no, on, I'll give us a song. Yeah. Hi, Yaya. I'm yeah. not doing a song. Yeah, yeah, are we you could. Gonna, do a song. Are you going to do a song, Yaya? If we'd been clever, we would have started a, a band twenty years ago, Gigi. Yes. Wouldn't? Well, uh, there have been the, different times. Over the years. crowds cheering for you, Sash. They loved your song. They loved it. They loved it. Thanks, Monkey. We love you, Bubba. Give us a song. Just give us a verse. Go on. <laughs> what about a dance? No, no, I just want to do a dance. So you don't. You don't want to do a dance. Don't want to do what you can't perform for us. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do we pay you for? Oh, we don't pay you. <laughs> so, so, um, do you want to have a look at some pickies, or, or do we want to get mum in? What would you prefer? Mum, do you want to come in? I want to come in and be the Okay, she wants to come in and be in, so we might swap seats with Yaya. We'll let her come right. in, or do you oh, want to swap nice. over that way? Okay, so she's going to come in here, okay? Are we... All right. Um, love you, Jeej. I love and, you, Sash. And love you all beautiful people who are, are there for my gorgeous movie star sister. She's awesome. Love you. And uh, what you see is what you get with Jeej. We are what we are. And thank you so much, Jeej, because I am getting orders from your amazing show for oh, my oh. paintings. Okay, no, first of all, I think it's important that we do show some photos before it gets – so we've, we've got people here – um, and let me just, you're not going to be able to see them, Sash, but I'll just describe a few while mum's getting okay. organised. So, Sash, please tell people where they can find you to get in contact to um, if they wanted a picture done because her pictures are amazing. You do all sorts of shapes and sizes as well, all different price ranges as well. Um, oh, that's your and, old And one. the great thing is is that you could just send me a photo and I, then I can paint it or draw it and send it anywhere in the world, which is wonderful. So... Um, I'm just so going through. Got Sasha Stafford Facebook. Oh, Sasha Stafford Art. Sasha Stafford Art on Facebook and also on Instagram. And I've also got another Facebook page which is cheeky where I tell my mad stories called Fucked Up But Fabulous. And that's on there as well on Facebook. But yeah, this Sasha so Stafford amazing. Art. Oh, what's this? This one, this is a picture of. Oh, can you see? Can you see? Oh, is that your. What's that? Hey. Oh, that's my page, is it? What is it? What is it? Hey. Is it Instagram or Facebook? Oh, You've Instagram. got to be specific. Sasha Stafford Art on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sasha Stafford Art on Instagram and on and Facebook. Also Sasha, and also Sasha Stafford Art on Facebook as well. So this is some beautiful stuff. So you, there's a very abstract. Uh, there's beautiful. Um, we used to model for you a bit, didn't we, Sash? 
Uh, I do a lot of Jeej. I love painting Jeej because because of her acting um, past. She does a posy pose. You don't want posy pose. You just want to like catch her a moment, and that's what's really important when you send a sketch through too. We just like um, uh, capturing a moment as opposed oh, to like posy pose. I can put you at least in there, so you can't see. But you're you're still in in frame, Sash, as we're just showing these pictures. You've also do, and I still have one that the kids made with the um, uh, with the hand prints as well. Oh you know? yes, go and get it from my bedroom, darling. Go and run and get it. So I wanted to show this. So for people who say they're not arty, and as as we said before, with the lovely man who asked before, like anything, the more you do, the better you get. You def everyone can be an artist, all right? It's definitely in all of us. But I wanted to show this handprint thing. It's a really cute thing to do um, and very also reasonable and cheap and so heartfelt. People love it when you make them something so much more than when you just um, buy them something. So um, what you do, you put paint on your children's – so this was when Jasper and Ella were both babies – on their footprints and handprints. So I did um, – Ella was about four months old. They got huge feet and hands because my ex-husband six foot six. Um, and so she – little pink. So I painted the whole back in like a turquoise first. Then I put pink on her – put your hand up there. On her – it's bigger than mine now. Look at that. Your hand's bigger than mine. Wow. Um, I put that on there and her foot. And then Jasper's was – just and Jasper's was the white. And then afterwards it just go around in another funky colour. And that was really cheap. So I bought a whole heap of canvases. I don't know. They are probably only a couple of dollars each. And so heartfelt and beautiful thing to do. Anyone can do that. And it's a really fun thing to do. I think I gave all of you guys them for Christmas that year. Um, so there's a photo of the family. There's the cheeky sister, Cappy, looking just mischievous. This is the one with mum and dad and Mark and and you and I, Sash. And then oh, before, looking at... Before Facebook, I've, I'm sure a lot of people in America, they do that too. We were very big into the family portraits. You pay the photographer to come in and take these very geeky photos of you, and that's what a few of those are there. But they're lovely memories, of course, to have. And also, can you give us a little rundown about the barefoot, please? Because now we're having a look at pictures with the barefoot. Okay, so I moved to this island uh, 20 years ago. We talked about that story last time, and it was all because of Gigi, and that was a wonderful because she saw an ad in her paper, and that's how I ended up on this random island. Um, anyway, and I moved here with my um, ex-husband. We got married here. No regrets. Beautiful man, 20 years, two gorgeous children. And we had we opened this restaurant on the beach overlooking the ocean. It's sort of the primo, and my ex-husband still runs it, primo wedding small function um, centre. It's art gallery and restaurant. And um, it's just beautiful. So 18 years doing lots of things there, exhibitions and wine tastings and all that too. But the cute thing is, is because it's on the island, the creek behind the restaurant has crocodiles in it. This is what it's like. <laughs> and um, I remember one time, it was so funny, um, last year I had all of our tables were outside, <laughs> but when it rained, we put the tables inside. And because I've had this restaurant for 20 years, when we started it, we had the 300 CD stacker. Now we've all got Bluetooth and stuff. We Everyone's had, like, loving it. 300 Sorry, CD stacker. And anyway, and you had all the speakers going through the, the restaurant. But over the years, over the years, the possums jump made the speakers come out. The possums in Australia aren't like possums in America. They're actually really cute. They're not like scary, evil demons. Yeah, we like have that. a really scary, huge I know possum you in do. our yard. I'll find a picture for next time to show you how cute the possums are here. They're really cute. Anyway, this woman sitting there eating, and I've That's just told us. her the story about how – the year before, I was talking to a customer and then a crab walked out of the restaurant, out of the, the kitchen, and we don't even serve crab. So it's come in off the beach. And That's amazing. Fresh crab. Crab. And <laughs> it walked out of the – and while it's – I'm going, oh, my God, and there's a crab walking out of the restaurant. And then the next thing, a possum fell through the speaker hole onto a lady's head, right oh onto her God. head while she was sitting there at the restaurant. <laughs> uh, here's a little photo of the three of us when we were kids so that's sash cap and Gigi. she's so I'm there like a, a, a brunette version of Gigi, and cappy's sort of the one in between us and mum used to do this geeky thing where she'd dress us all on the same outfits but it was quite cute that's sash that painting at the, uh, and then he, here's some more of your work that you've done the, the really amazing one with the little girl sash she looks a bit like sky 
Oh yeah, so these are these are what people are doing at the moment. So I never met that little girl. The, the grandma just sent me the photo, wow. and I did. And and there's uh, photos of magnetic island speckled through here. That's Sash, Mum, and I. I think that. So was as I've said before, in last time, if, if, if anyone didn't hear last time, I live on this little island in the Great Barrier Reef. It's only got two thousand permanent residents, so it's not like the rest of Australia. As I said before, everyone in Australia has seen kangaroos and wallabies, but we've got one of the biggest koala populations in Australia. Most Australians haven't seen a koala in the wild. They're everywhere here. You can actually hear them mating at night. They make this grunting noise. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a lot of wildlife here. And it's like everything. I'm in country Australia. So it's not like the big cities. Lots of wildlife. Music. And 25 beaches on this one tiny little island. There's my sister dancing in the background. So you can yeah. always... My, is that my daughter? My sister. I'm like, wait, wait how did Cappy get there? Last this time, is, I said, is that your sister? My this daughter. is Jasp in, in, at football. He's quite good at football, isn't he, Sash? So in Australia, we have two types of football. We have rugby, rugby, which is taken from um, England. That's where we got it from, England, rugby. And Jasper plays rugby. And we also have Australian rules, <laughs> Australia one. Jasper plays both. Ah, and there's lots of wildlife on the uh, island. This is a really beautiful photo of Ella dancing. She's doing the splits. God, you are so flexible, Ella. It's insane. That's amazing. You love dancing, yeah, huh? Before, Ella's, Ella is like a warrior princess that she dances everywhere and she does that, but she also plays rugby against co-ed teams and, and she's sporty. And so she's got, as I say, balls of thunder. It's a good balls way of feel. thunder. Thunder from down under. <laughs> hey, uh, here's a cool photo when you were a little teeny tiny bubba with John Lennon. Is it John Lennon? No, no, John, no, Denver? John, John Denver. Denver. John Denver. John Denver. Take me home. Take me home. Was that? John Denver. Was the bed? And he's wearing Nana's, Nana's um, apron there, apparently. He'd been oh. cooking a hungy in the back of the um, and Dad. garden. And Yaya said, what? He sat down to me and sung that when I was an itty bitty boy. The oh Americans God. know that. Yeah, he sung that to me. Oh, feather bed, feather Yes, bed. I like. We used to play that all the time, didn't we, Mum? Yep. Beautiful well, we man, beautiful man, and he was there, and um, and yeah, that happened. So we had a wonderful upbringing with Mum and Dad, bringing all these amazing people and shows to Australia. And because Australia was so small back then, I mean, we're still small, but back then there was only like ten million people in Australia. So I can see uh, when I. When I look at the baby photos, I can see Sky in in me because at the moment, like everyone's like, "Oh, she just looks like Jed," and I know she does, but all I see is me. <laughs> yeah, I know. And the thing is, is, is I'll do that. I'll look at my kids, Gigi, and I'll go, "Neither of them look like me at all." And then I'll I see. I think a they photo both look like them. you. And then I see a photo of them. I go, "Oh my god!" And so many people do that too. They They'll go, "Oh, that's that. Jasper," or "That's Ella." So it, they get the best of both of us, and that's how it should be, darling. Yeah, so there's the definitely elements of Jed and you in Scott, Princess Sky. Yeah. This is a, a hike that we did when we came to visit you and we thought oh. we'd we'd um, go on this crazy hike and uh, like 20 minutes in. Didn't we turn around, Bubba? No, we went to the wrong beach. Remember? And we couldn't then we couldn't find out what happened with them. We were all dehydrated and we almost and died. That, and, that's with, um, and that's with half of our younger brothers and sisters. So half those kids there, as you talked about on the show, are our dad's latest crop of kids who are actually younger than these ones here. Don't yes, we're mad, but there's lots of love. There's lots of love. We're very open and very, very down to earth and you know what you're getting. There's no nonsense. Uh, so we're just having a look at photos from Horseshoe Bay when little Skywalker went there for the first time for Easter. That was pretty cool. So Cappy's Cappy... pregnant there with baby Sunny. Yes. So that was Easter two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before... Last year. Last year. Uh, some beautiful flowers that you've painted, Magnetic Island. You also do those really cool little beach paintings as well, Sash, you know, the little, like, and postcards as well. There's Mummy and us when we were little babies and Sasha and Cappy and me. Uh, there's so, Ella balancing on a tree. Yes. That's, what she does. That's how she rolls. I, I remember, I remember, um, yeah, I, I threw that one of you doing the splits on the tree. Oh, and no you, you guys also rescue animals too, right? Oh. You've been doing that. Baba, tell us about that. 
We okay. So we help out with Mythco, isn't it? Magnetic Island fauna. Creatures. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're wildlife care volunteers. And we help with the wildlife. And we rescue animals with others, and we feed baby wallabies and possums, and just help make sure their health is. We help okay. save that wedge tail eagle, which was just phenomenal. And it actually, and I, I think I said this last time too. Ninety-nine percent of any animal that goes into wildlife care has been hit by a car. But so no. because if they've been attacked by a dog, they will be killed. So we've all got to learn to slow down, people. Because um, what, what will we do without all these beautiful animals on the planet? So Sometimes. here's a good photo. We're just going back to that hike photo just so people can kind of get an understanding. So there's Jake and Jed and Sky, and then Jasper, who's Sasha's son. Sad. And then we have Kai, who's our brother, River, who's our brother, Summer, who's our brother. Sister. From Just so some of who's our sister from Justine. And then Timmy Justine, that's Dad's wife. <laughs> that's that's Dad's well. missus. And then Ella and then me. Look, at you as tall as me in this photo. And she that was the hike there. where we were all like, where, what are we doing? Let's go home. I'm not there. But, yeah, I thought you'd like that. So that's so there's lots of walks all over this island. And how cute's this? There's this walk called the Forts Walk. We get a lot of backpackers here. I think I told you that last time because you can do – it's one of the cheapest places to do your divers course, right? And it's just a nice place for – I think a lot of people like sending their um, young kids to Australia and, and here because it's a nice, relatively safe place to be, you know. Anyway, um, what, on the Forts Walk, you can always find koalas. And koalas will stay in tree for a long, long time. So what the – I don't know if I told you this last time. The backpackers will actually make arrows out of rocks and yeah. sticks to, to, pointing towards a tree. So you look up and you'll see a koala because they'll stay in it for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So how cute's that? So koalas in there at the moment, there's, it's mating season, so there's a lot of koalas with babies on their back. We very, very see, we've quite often see koalas, don't we? Oh, here's a family photo of the old school family photo with uh, Mark, who you guys have all seen on the show before. So Cappy the naughty one is the only one that hasn't been on yet because we keep, I keep inviting her and she's like, yeah, oh, next week, next week. On, she'll probably, even though she's the naughtiest, she, she oh, no. She, she might get a little bit shy. No, no, she's a lot more. She oh. she's gets a bit. Uh, I remember one time when we were we had a um, uh, one time when we had uh, I took her to like a um because remember I used to live with Cat for many years, and so I'd always take her to party the house and stuff, the party house, and I took her to a fundraiser where we had to plant a tree. You know what I mean, like a charity day, and it was you know save the Earth Day, and. The camera came up to me and they said, oh, so, you know, how do you feel about, you know, today and everyone being here? And I was like, oh, it's fantastic and it's great that we're all here together and, you know, sharing the love and, you know, this is what it's all about. We're all in this together and, you know, here's to looking forward, you know. And they go, and how about you? And Kat goes... <laughs> <laughs> we don't mean that, though, Cappy, because since then... She's, she was doing lots of makeup tutorials. Remember, she's she was, amazing. So she's so amazing. Funny. I'd but, still uh, tease She's her. actually the funniest out of all of us, but she, she's so funny. Remember, remember, I remember um, going to, driving to school and there's this bus and they're all waving at us. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, they're just waving. And I turn around and Cappy's just doing a brown eye out the back of the window. She's bum so hanging naughty. out. She's just always so cheeky. But she's always – to be able to laugh at life is such a big yeah, thing. And, she, and when you're around her, and even as a kid, she just makes you laugh. I Jesus. still swear that she was the one that came up with the term drunk dialing. That has been stolen. I'm <laughs> Sometimes this arrow doesn't want to come back. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to move through the photos for us. Um, uh, this was last Easter. That Was that the only time that... Now, are you holding Jasper or Caps Bubba here or Sunny? I, th that's me with baby Jasper ages God. ago. White dress. Where, where are you? Yeah, where are that you? Is, it in that, that's Early Beach. Early is a little bit further down from here. That's where you go out to Daydream Island, Hamilton Island, Haymond Island. So that's baby Jasper. That's cockatoos in the background. Oh, they want to know what a brown eye is, but be careful explaining. It's like mooning. <laughs> mooning. There we go. Mooning. Uh, <laughs> it's when showing you, a brown showing eye. Your, your bottom off. <laughs> your bare bottom off. Good work, Cappy. Uh, okay. This is um, so here we have Ella in a beautiful dress because Cappy's bringing out. Cappy's been working on an organic skincare range, and she also has developed um, 
a beautiful uh is it called island time sash is that the the name of their new new brand and it's all I, purses and is it i is it papa i believe so and she's doing um, a whole range of clothes beautiful dresses oh and they're just all from sustainable from sky from bali the baby From sky Bali. Um, yeah, baby you, you sky say, sum up my sister and my brother and my niece and so how does it work so so, nie- so ellen's there are... in the purple she's my daughter she's your niece and then we've got summer a little but longer have... than she's our sister nieces and are older got... than nieces are older than some brothers and sisters well yeah. all of the and brothers you've and got, so sky is like ella they're both our children and they're cousins Hi. This is one of the dresses that Cap has in the range. It's very you should, pretty. Have you got that great one of Summer and, and um, Ella jumping up in the middle of the year? Yes, I do. I haven't got there yet, but there's a Sky and Summer because also Ella, Ella, you're best friends with Sums, aren't you? Yeah. So, so she's, um, she's your auntie then. Yes, and they're very, very yeah, close. This is Ella's dance, a Stedford. So pretty, babe. So in the. Yeah, no, doing the I, doing the splits. This is um, us three girls in school. Me, uh, Sash, this is the one Cap, and where I. Where you make fun of, of your your ports, and I've got the cute one, and you've got awful ones, isn't it? That was Somerset. There's the outside of the barefoot. Oh, that one. Yeah. That's all of us up at the. Um, this is the most r- ridiculous look I've ever seen on my face. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm like, what am I doing? Oh, hey, which one? It, it, we're, we're sitting on the deck on top of the. Oh. And I'm like, I look like I'm in one of those, you know, when you used to buy patterns for sewing dresses, and like dresses from like Lincraft and they were like from the 60s. Is that the one with Oscar there? Yes, he lost this jazz. Uh, here you go. Here's the cool photo of the girls doing the leap. That You guys are amazing. So that's, oh, that's Summer, one of the my sister. On the island. And Ella. That's, Bay. that's the beach that my restaurant's on. It's so beautiful. Beautiful so, summer and Ella. Oh, so now we've got mum's photos. So we'll, I'll wait oh, okay. for those Oh, okay. So should we get mum in here now? Let's yes, get mum in. Yes, now we shall, we'll, we shall get mum up. She, t- so tell maybe, her she's only got two minutes. Okay, only got two minutes. <laughs> and maybe next time I'm on, darling, I might actually do um, some examples of painting. We, we might everybody do. would love that. We would love we'll that. We'll do that next time, all right? I'll get Ella yes, to help. Juju right? would love that. That sounds amazing. We'll move, we'll move. I love you. I love, love you. Love you so much. Wait, Remember one more me. One more time. Where can people find your work? One more time, nice and clear. Uh, and how can they contact you to get... Um, Facebook, Sasha Stafford Art. Sasha Stafford Art, Art Facebook. And also Instagram, Sasha Stafford Art. All right, uh, and she can send all over the world. It's very, very, very special, and she's extraordinary. You've just seen her beautiful work. We love you, Sash. I miss you very, very much. But, Jude, you know, even though we're not physically with each other, and I mean this to everyone, we're always connected. Our hearts are always connected. I feel you every day, and I can love you. Can you do your little affirmation that you did the other day? May I be happy? May I be May happy? I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be peaceful. May I be filled with love. May I be filled with love. May you be happy. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be peaceful. May you be filled with love. May you be filled with love. May all beings be happy. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be filled with love. May all, May all beings be filled with love. Namaste. Namaste. I love you. I love you. Love you. Love you, G. Love Stay love strong, you. babe. Love hey, you, babe. Ella, Bella. Ella. Ella. Okay, on with the show. Now she's gone. What's up? <laughs> Hey, I would like to do a session with you too where you do some dancing and singing, so have a think about it sometime, okay? Because you're amazing. All right, I love you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you. Love you. I miss you too. I love you. Bye. Here comes Yaya. Hi, Yaya. I don't want to come on because of all the stories. What stories? What stories? I'll be, what sort of mother allowed all those things to happen? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, Mom. I don't know what to say about that. 
you three girls all, always got up to a lot of fun and a lot of mischief. There was a lot of mischief to be had, but it's, we're, we're free, we were very free-spirited. How true. How true. <laughs> well, I wonder why. Exactly. We followed, well, we learned the best from the best. Worlds because you had your dad who just lived for making money and doing shows, and you had me who for 16 years did that, but then I did a total 360 and went to the country and went back to nature and we gardened and you kids hated it at first. You just wanted to be at home in your beautiful rooms and you came out to our place in a bunk beds. They were army beds. We couldn't afford to actually have proper beds for the first couple of years. You didn't want to come. And then eventually, bit by bit, as we did more and more events at the hideaway, um, we did it up so that guests could come and stay. Thank so you, mommy. you guys that you had a balance of both both worlds and can appreciate um, a campfire as well as a red carpet opening night. You're very mm. blessed to have had those experiences, I think. And remember when you uh, invited me to come and do the course and I didn't want to do it. All I wanted <laughs> to do was go and party with my friends because I was like, what was I, 18? No, it would have been, I think I was in my first year of uni, so 19. Year of uni, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, well, the course that we did, the, which was a total detox of your whole body, was very, very full on. So for someone your age, I mean, that would be about the earliest that one could do it because the first five or six days you fast with no food at all, except you get all your nourishment from fresh organic juices, um, which we made three times a day. And then there's a warm soup, which is mainly broth at night. And um, I mean, I didn't like doing the course either. I loved running it. I loved helping people. But the actual fasting, the first couple of days, is very challenging. And, and you have to drink it. apple cider vinegar? Yes, there were various supplements. Well, we fashioned it after an American doctor, doctor of osteopathy, um, who became really a legend around the world in most naturopathic colleges, Dr. Bernard Jensen. And his daughter-in-law and his son are carrying on the business. Um, but I first did the cleanse in 1986. And the first two days, I just wanted to run away. I just hated it. But my saving grace was I found a couple of crushed cashews in the bottom of my makeup bag <laughs> and I would ration them out, you know, a quarter a day. <laughs> and all the practitioners, because it was four practitioners, I was already a naturopath, um, were so good. They encouraged me to stay. They said, you know, you've got you to finish this, Jenny. And, of course, by day seven, as we were packing up to go, I was just well, I called my hotmail new person every day because that's what you feel like. You just feel so fantastic. So it was the fasting, the cleansing, the skin brushing, daily breath exercises, and then this thing called a kalema, which is cleaning out the whole of the inner tube like a colonic, but you do it by yourself in the privacy of your own bathroom. They, we teach people how to do it. So it's um, – and the stuff that comes out – I it would be X-rated. Uh, but by the day three or four, everyone's calling you in to say, look at this, look at this, look what came out of me, I can't believe it. Everything from sacks of worms to... <laughs> to um, uh, did one... someone have a, a popcorn? Wasn't that one of the tales that we heard that someone had a popcorn kernel and they hadn't yes, eaten they, popcorn for years? They'd had a lot of um, irritable bowel sy syndrome and symptoms for years. And it was on one of the first courses, so we were still learning ourselves. We had um, 16 different practitioners, including a nurse, and occasionally we'd have a sympathetic doctor who may have done the course and was interested in seeing what was on, but the rest were all different types of um, alternative therapies from kinesiology to massage to Reiki, you know, all the different modalities, naturopaths. Um, but this gentleman... Um, couldn't believe it because what we do is in the loo, in the toilet bowl, we put a, a, their calendar. own. Yeah, calendar. 
um, so that you could catch what came out, so that you could see what it was. Inspect it. Because yes. you're, you're, quite, you're quite proud after a few days, get, after you get over the grossness. Exactly. Some people would get uh, six ropes. feet on ropes of muck. We, we don't understand. And this is collected from birth onwards. Every hot chip we've ever eaten, every bacon with fatty stuff, it's bits of it. Get, it can get wedged, like still wedged, in, wedged in little pockets and stuff in the, right? Well, after, you know, after your teens, nearly everybody has a few little dents and things. Some are squeaky clean. I mean, vegetarians are amazing. They do the course on day two. Out would come this six, six foot long, beautifully shaped. You could see the whole shape of the bowel because they also took supplements and flaxseed oil, which helps it all stick together. Um, the chat room doesn't know what to think. They're, they're having no, a hard I bet, time. But... No, I bet they don't. But I tell you what, you really, you really um, appreciate the human body after doing that. And I always did the night shifts because I'm a night person. This to me is still very early. Um, and, you know, people would say, look, I'm dying. I'm going to have to finish the course. And I said, yes, I know. I felt exactly the same when I did it the first couple of times. But you wait for the relief. And so I'd get the nurse in to check all their vitals and, and she'd say, they're fine, nothing wrong with them. But as we detox and as yeah. the, the toxins start to come out of the body, it can be very difficult. But anyway, this man with the popcorn cheese, um, and it was, it was petrified popcorn, little whole little, little bunches of kernel popcorn. or whatever, right? Yeah, little yeah, little. whole little bunches of it. He said... I haven't eaten popcorn, he was about 52, since I went to the movies when I was 18 and got a tummy ache afterwards and ended up having my appendix out because I got appendicitis. Oh. So I've never eaten popcorn. So those little bits of petrified popcorn have been sitting in him for all those years. That's insane, isn't it? That is That's crazy. Insane. And obviously, if there's nasties in there, you're going to get sick sooner or later. You've got, it's, it's not well, great, right? Sadly, with GMO foods, which corn is one of the biggest offenders, but sad, and all the sprays and stuff they put on foods, they put little tears and rips, tiny, tiny, in the bowel lining, and that which isn't supposed to ever be um, penetrated by it half the stuff that these days most people are leaking yuck into their bloodstream and into their lymph glands. And that's why we get, you know, swollen lymph glands here and here and down in the groin. Because the lymph uh, glands are our sewerage system that clear, clear those things from the body. I just want to let the chat room know, Mum. Um, Mum is an extraordinary healer. And if you have questions about... <clears throat> you know, ailments or things that are bothering, don't, don't hesitate to, we're, we're very open here, we're very down to earth and we're very chill. Like uh, Venus Ursa just said, uh, I've had IBS ever since my gallbladder was removed. Do not get your gallbladder removed unless it's killing you. Because that's the other thing too, it's quite often like w with tonsillitis and stuff, they'll m remove the tonsils and then the next thing, something else, it's, it, they're there for a reason, you know. The gallbladder can go into overload and... Part of the reason, perhaps, I won't say because I don't know this person, is that the bowel was so backed up in certain areas that the gallbladder works over time and then after a while it starts to form stones and cause a lot of problems. And the other thing that's so important, if you stop and think about it, from our breast down to our um, groin, in that little area there is crammed all our major organs, our liver, our gallbladder, pancreas, all the things that make our body tick. So that if you have a congested bowel, even if you're regular, most people still have backup. I mean, Dr. Jensen used to say we should go to the loo after every single meal. Now, how wow. many people do that? What, like number twos? Yes. Wow. That's how naturally it should occur because as you eat, it just goes through. Goes through. And that I'm we should very regular. I'm very regular, but not that regular. <laughs> and that we also should urinate approximately every two hours. And it's amazing the number of people I saw over all those years um, that would go a whole day and never no. urinate. 
<clears throat> I urinate so too it, much. It, Remember, it, mum, you're like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know. I just wee a lot. Pardon me, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm what... The opposite as well, and that is if you're a sweet tooth and your pancreas starts to go out, you're heading towards pre-diabetic condition. So oh. um, it can be the opposite. Um, and I always say to everyone, don't just drink plain water. She says with my water bottle here, always put something in it. To like lemon? Lemon, a strawberry, a piece of mint, whatever you like, just to slow the passage of the water through the body. Um, because otherwise you're just flushing out all your vitamins and minerals and losing a lot. So it's important to just sip it, not just guggle. Storm wants to know... Um, anxiety, and so do I actually, and I should have asked you this many years ago, anxiety, what's the best thing to deal with anxiety? Well, anxi anxiety, obviously there is a genetic part to that, meaning if your parents or grandparents were nervy and type A, like most of our family are, very as, as all your crew have already seen, we're very out there and sensitive to... Energies. Uh, energies um but i agree with what i was taught by my various teachers over the years it's generally a lack of the b vitamins and b vitamins you get through grains and bread and nuts um it's very hard if you're highly stressed or adrenalized all the time to be able to keep up with the amount you need through foods so that's in one case where people do get anxious. There's a combination of, uh, we have some fabulous combinations here. In fact, when I come to America, I always go to your wonderful whole food shops and stock up because sadly, a lot of our, our um, dose, the amount they're allowed to put in any particular supplement is very low. You almost need a bottle. Really? Of, yes. They brought in, you know, I, you know me, I think it's all part of Big Pharma not allowing these things to be effective. Right. In fact, one time I did go out and protest way back in the 90s where they were changing the ability of how many milligrams and what dosage you could put in herbal supplements and vitamins and minerals. I mean, our bodies are made up of stardust, you um, wonderful sci-fi fans. We are. That's. It's just – and our whole reason for walking, talking, eating is – the vitamin and mineral content in the body. And we can only get, as Dr. Jensen say, what you eat and drink today walks and talks tomorrow. So that if you're not eating a full range, and he always said, every day have a rainbow salad. Um, and how many people do that, have a rainbow salad, and changing it all the time. So we get a wide variety. And of course, it's also if you know you live inland, you don't, maybe you don't get much seafood or it's too expensive or vice versa. If you live on coastal towns, a lot of people don't get, and B vitamins also come from liver and the meats. So vegans have problems with panic attacks too. But a lot of the food we eat today has empty nutrients in it. All the yeah. stuff, anything that's wrapped from the supermarket, it's got preservatives, colorings, flavorings, nothing wrong with having the odd bit, but if you live on that, slowly all your minerals and vitamins are going to eat slowly go down and you'll be fine for years and then suddenly uh oh you've got a panic attack so there's the two things i'd recommend one is zinc <clears throat> zinc is also when people have phobias or get really nervous about certain if anything from you know getting <clears throat> getting in a lift to having a baby mm -hmm. or a new job and a good range of the B vitamins. There's also a thing called Flora Vital, which I bought in the States. It's a liquid from Europe. It's quite expensive, um, about $39 a jar, but it's liquid. And liquids are much quickly, much quicker to absorb in the body and help you to recover a lot faster than having a tablet, which is likely to get stuck halfway down the bowel or be just weed or pooed out. So it, the more you can get from foods, juices, um, naturally, the better. But if it's not enough, you might have to up your supplements. I, 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 
I know chat room that we're be, we are being very open and, and, and welcome to our family. This is just how we roll. Um, because I, I, after I had Sky, I, I had lots of challenges, didn't I, Mum? I, I felt very out of my body and I felt very hormonally not balanced. But it wasn't like I... It wasn't like a postnatal thing. I mean, it, it was, but it didn't what feel was? like everything I read in the books. Do you know what I mean? It felt like a, it felt, and I couldn't figure it out. And also we were working around the clock. We were, you know, we just moved house. Uh, we just had the bubba. We we're traveling internationally almost every weekend, if not, you know, state to state. And it's very important if you, you know, are feeling anxious or are feeling depressed or are feeling off balance there's nothing wrong with it like I even spoke to the the it was you know mum had given me a list of things and I was like yeah yeah of course I've got to do this and take my vitamins and stuff but it was a very simple even the lady at Whole Foods when I went in and said I don't know I just feel weird I don't feel like me I don't know what what it is like it's hard to describe but I don't feel and I, it's not I I have a very strong connection with the bait with Bubba I, I have, we're, we're all good it's nothing like that it's just I feel weird in my own person and she goes, well, are you, are you breastfeeding? And I said, yes. And she goes, well, were you taking, you know, your postnatals and whatever? Because I was taking prenatals, but then because also money was quite tight and vitamins are so expensive. I, I, once Bubba came, I was like, oh, well, I can cut. I, now I don't have to take, to take the prenatals anymore. That'll save me, you know. And um, she's like, oh, no, you have to be pounding all those vitamins in and everything because the, the bubba is literally just sucking all the nutrients out of you and as soon as i took started taking my postnatals and is it the fish the omega uh, I, like li- literally like the next day i was like oh i can breathe again and because i was having intense panic attacks and and i everything was okay but it, it there was just a edge on that i'd never felt before and i definitely think it was a combo of you the reality of you know working non-stop not probably having as much support as what i needed because i think sometimes i'm too strong and too i don't i don't let, let people in so and you guys weren't here because you're based in australia and we'll yeah, so I, it, yeah mum was here for the birth but i mean that year after was quite brutal really it's weird because you kind of put all the energy on the birth part and then once the birth thing happens there's a whole after thing isn't there like people didn't oh. tell me that you kept gushing stuff for like months and months i'm like how much is there any blood no, anyway pardon my french but it's 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 an in, intense traumatic experience as beautiful as, as it is i don't know how you did it four times mum. <laughs> well every time you say i'm never doing it again it's the same as when you go to india and you finally oh. get on the plane you say i'm not going back there and then suddenly it calls you india and suddenly you get all clacky again. I definitely want to do it again. I definitely want to do it again, but I, I just, I'd never, it, I feel like you almost need to go into, uh, you need like post-traumatic stress. It's almost that intense oh. because you have a creature coming out of your body and you're like, well, this is a thing. <laughs> Isn't it nature wonderful though that, I mean, for the protection and the health of the newborn, it robs you of everything you've got. Yes, it, it's amazing. Your calcium, all your magnesium, all your Bs, all all those things, which is, as we showed last time in my nutrition book, my original one, it's all in there and it shows you what signs if you're deficient in which um, minerals or vitamins. And that it's when I had each of you kids, great clumps of hair fill out and I had right. two book patches. I didn't know what was going on. Because no like, one tells you this stuff, you know, until you start going, no. then it's awkward. And then I, I finally went to a sort of doctor who was, we're talking way back, dealing in, dilly-dallying in natural supplements and stuff. And he said, oh, you, you're just lacking in vitamins and minerals. Well, no one had ever told me that. Exactly. This is long before, I was, long before I was a naturopath. And it really tweaked my interest. And so he said, just go down to the chemist below and get some Barocca and have it now. So I had this fizzy drink. You know, I think you have them in America. Yeah. I don't yeah. have them anymore because they've got artificial colorings in them. But some of them, I think, are, well, the birds are very loud today. Are, um, uh, they've taken the nasties out of them. But I had some Barocca and I remember driving home and I started singing. And I hadn't sung for months. Because I was just 
exhausted, run yeah. down, often crying. And that's what happens in the first year, even no one, like some. Because everyone celebrates the, the, you know, oh, and the, the perfect, you know, everything. And, and it, it is all that. It's all that. But there's also a very big, you know, you've just, your body's never been through anything like that before, has it? Like, and, fingers crossed to also suggest to the guy that's having challenges with panic attacks is there's always rescue remedy if people yeah. do or don't know about it. Rescue remedy is a homeopathic remedy and it's uh, originally was um, created in the late 1800s and brought to the public because the doctor realised that so many of the physical conditions were caused by mental conditions and our mindset and the energies that flow up here. And so he used to collect, it sounds weird, it sounds wonderful, but he'd collect dew drops of various flowers in his English garden and the countryside and started to experiment with patients. And he brought out a set, I think there's 32 bark flower remedies. The oddball out is called rescue remedy and that's a combination. We call them oh hell drops. So when you feel like bath time with three little people like I used to have and, or, you know, um, you just can't cope. Two drops on the tongue or you can apply them here on the main artery or here if you don't want to actually take them. They're distilled on brandy, so some people don't want to take the alcoholic version, but now they're also making one without it. And we, I, at first I didn't believe it what they were supposed to do, but they're worth looking up on um, Google or YouTube or a bookshop um, because Rescue Remedy I started to experiment with. Uh, we had a dog that was in a car accident, gave it a few drops. It hadn't come out from under the bed for two days. It was okay, but it was m mentally thinned. And I put two drops in drinking water. Uh, for the dog and put it under the bed and I heard these strange groans and noises and I went, oh no, the dog was injured, oh maybe I should take it to the vet. And it was basically releasing mm. all the oh, was coming from out, under the bed and out it came about half an hour later, right as a button. Wow. At the same, we had two goldfish in our fish tank who looked like they were flopping around on the top and I went, oh, this is not good. So I just put one drop in the fish tank and an hour later I went back and they're swimming. Then I, then I tried it because we did so, we used to grow our own food at the hideaway to feed everyone. I started experimenting with all the plants and herbs. I'd do one row plain, one row, I'd put a few drops in the watering pan and sprinkle the leaves of lettuces or herbs and you won't believe it, guys, I'm not exaggerating. Because it takes away the shock effect the, and transplanting seedlings into a garden is a shock for a plant. It takes a little while to recover before it suddenly blooms forth. The ones that were regularly given rescue remedy were twice the size. Wow. They grew much faster. And they also say it's number one for heart attacks or stroke. So we, all our life, I used to put in your kid's bath water to calm you down, along with a bit of lavender. Remember uh, you... I the, 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 in the car and we always have it. The other night, Ella had a sore tummy and I said, have you had some rescue? She said, no. And she found it in my cupboard. I travel with these suitcases of natural supplements. Ma Mary Poppins bag. Yeah. And she was fine for school the next day, but it was look, not looking that way earlier. It's, Remember, it's, there was a time when you wrapped us up in cling wrap with garlic? Compressors, yes. <laughs> so if you've got a headache, you can put a cold compress on your feet, which takes the heat out of your head and takes it down to your feet. But one or, time, it was our tummy, yes. remember, with garlic yep. and stuff like that around our tummy? Yep. Well, that's exactly to get that warm, to warm compress to get the, all this section starting to, what Sasha was saying earlier about 
stagnated blood with yoga, allow your stretching and your movement allows the flow to start again because most of us sit too much. So to do everything inverted the other way, and that's what yoga does, doesn't it? We're doing poses that we don't normally do when we're walking, standing, sitting, eating. So it's wonderful because it moves the blood around. So that's what the compressors are for. You can put a hot one on, take it off, put a freezing cold one on, take it off, put a hot one on again, and the blood starts to percolate and move. Captain wants to know what's the best thing for motivating oneself to do stuff like writing books, writing letters of applications. I hate that for the letter part. What's the best motivation? Mm. Um, that's a, well, I mean, you're either motivated or you're not. You're passionate about doing it or you're not. You've got to love it. You've got to love it. I think you, yes. you've got to, right? You've got to love it and you've got to want it. Otherwise, what's the point? And then, and then the motivation will come, right? I mean, it's weird with all the weirdness going on right now because you're like, sometimes I get, get to, on the weekends when I don't have Twitch and I've got my list of chores and I'm like, but wh why? <laughs> I don't know, what, what's the point, you know? And, and there has to be a certain amount of self-discipline as well. And, you know, I'm not one to talk because I am known to just in, sit and enjoy nature for hours when I should be writing. So I do understand it does happen, but I mean you've got to have what one thing I did learn looking after thousands literally who'd come and live with us. You go and see a doctor, and then he gives you something, and you go away. We actually lived. We'd give the remedies, we'd do the work with the people. They'd do it for themselves, and then we'd live with them. So we would see the results. The courses were usually two weeks long, so we learned so much about everything from motivation to illness to you know people would come with cancer and when we do blood tests on them or we had an instant machine a hemoglobin machine and we could see and they could too their blood on a television monitor two seconds after it was in the body and we had an expert in that who was actually trained in america australian girl and she would say you don't have cancer you've just got far too many leukocytes or you've got some whatever is great. And then we have people who come with pimples and she do their blood and they did have cancer. They'd have cancer cells. So what we learned from all of these, and it could change. Blood tests can change. They're not set in time like our bodies and our fluids aren't. Uh -huh. They can change. If someone comes to you and, uh, you know, you fall in love that day, in the morning you were depressed, in the afternoon your whole blood set will have a very different screening. Wow. I do say that 40, well, when I was writing my first book, they said 45% ball pathology tests are not right. They need to be redone. So if it's something major, make sure you always have a couple done. Don't. And also look after yourself between the one test and the other. But what the whole point I'm getting to is that of all those years, watching all these people come and go from our farm, the number, number, number one thing, Captain, was if we don't jiggle our atoms, if we're not passionate about our life, our food, the book or the script we're working on, our partner, our daily life, if we're not in love with it, then we need to make changes. That will make you sicker quicker than anything. Number one is to find the excitement and the energy in every day. And also, a lot of it, as Sasha said with her affirmation at the end, when we wake up in the morning, have an affirmation or a prayer or a um, positive uh, something to listen to while you're making a brekkie. I mean, every day I juice. I don't particularly want the juices but without green veggie juices, my body, because I do love a little alcoholic beverage or two or three in the evenings, it's to flush the body. So green juices, so you hear our machine going with celery and kale and carrot and apple and beetroot regularly here. So you need to flush the body, you need to put your head in the right headspace, and if you're not enjoying what you do or you're not enjoying who you're with or what you plan, change them, change them. 
because in the long run, you're not going to be nice company anyway, or you're not going to do the right job for other people or yourself. So it's really important to connect. You know, as we said last time, I mean, I couldn't have got by in life without meditation stilling the mind because sometimes we lose our way. And that's one way to find it again. Uh, Shut up, Kitty. No, I love it. I love it all. I'm just re I'm reading the questions because there's a lot and there's lots of com very interesting comments. I'm trying to... Without mint. There is some where, mint right Where are you I'm... going? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, so when I... Can you still hear me, Mum? Yep. So two things that have helped me. Hi, Baba. Good dancing. Are you going to give us a dance? That's it. That's the dance? <laughs> Basil from the garden. That'll do for now. Uh, now, when home garden. when uh, this this uh, the, when when the world into when the world went in upside down and inside out, um, I I was uh, as you everyone knows as we all were very quite quite lost uh, and questioning about lots of things and and quite scared and mum is has always been a constant constant light in my life and I can tell her and I have told her <laughs> everything and anything there's no, nothing that, that this mother does not know <laughs> as embarrassing as all these things are listening to you and Sash <laughs> <laughs> but um and I really love that about us you you let me be the most honest and open person that I could ever be and that is a very feels like a very safe space and so you've always been like even through the nitty-gritty days and before you know th there's been many a affirmations as we've gone so I remember talking about the secret and I also uh, cap it got me on to Abraham Hicks and all and it's again it's like the yoga whatever whatever calms you down and whatever can put you in a good headspace and a good heart space but I found those two things like back on my um, back here, I put all my comic cons to remember where we've gone because there's so many adventures and stuff. And then there's a boat and there's a baby and there's all the ultrasound pictures. And then there's a happy family, you know, the dog. And then there's a, and I looked at it and in between all the photos, uh, these inspirational things that I sort of put up just because I like to look at them. And I've manifested all those things in there. there. <laughs> and with all the weird isolation and stuff, I'm like, oh, I just really need some contact with humans because I'm so used to hanging out with, you know, comic cons and stuff like that. And, the, the, you know, every day I'm just, just surrounded by so much love and light from this Twitch tribe and I'm so happy. And by the time I go to bed, I every single night put on Abraham Hicks and it's she, it's just really it's 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 helped me manifest really well like it's all about the law of attraction and you know mum and I've just found it very refreshing and very eye-opening you know I've managed to organize the car and managed to stay safe and healthy and still managed to do a couple of comic cons and managed to get twitch up and manage to and whether it just be yourself reminding yourself that you can do it or another another energy that you think is inspiring you whatever whatever rocks your boat really isn't it it's like just finding a way to stay positive and keep visualizing exactly what you want and you know my all-time favorite in saying is dream the life live the dream which is what my best friend wrote in my journal at school uh, and Louise oh. Louise uh, and uh, she Louise Maxwell and uh, she's now got a different last name because she's married but dream the life live the dream and we've done just that and I write it on all the, at all the comic cons and stuff and it's a very nice reminder but I've never like you, you've always taught me you know how to meditate and how to put what you want out there and this is the first time I, I guess also because we're so still we're not traveling around all the place and whatever else that i'm seeing it very clearly like literally we'll go to bed at night and, and put out to the universe the affirmations and literally the next day i'll check my email and i'll be like oh, what <laughs> well you know when you look at what's happened to us all this year it's it's we are taking a long pause in life we can fight it or we can go into it 
or in and or inward and set some goals for what we'd like for the rest of our lives. So because the whole world is, they always say it's crazy mad. It's phones, it's internet, it's people, it's shopping, isn't it? And suddenly everyone's going, and it is for many quite scary to be still. I mean, to me, it's a joy. I'm, I'm the opposite now, having been out there at the hideaway, I finally had to stop doing the courses because I came to the realization I was standing at the front door going, hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye. And I used to love it. I'd love to welcome people. I couldn't wait to work with them. It was always nice when they went, hopefully and usually a better person. And then one day I realized I don't want to open the door. I just want to be still. So, you know, we have to go with it. You know, it's we've got our moon cycles, our sun cycles, our birthday cycles, our lunar cycles. We we lose touch. I mean, that's what the human body was in its natural state. We, you know, the indigenous people of this world know it all too well that the the prawns would come on in the bay when the moon was waning at such and such a time and they would make their way down to get them and vice versa, you know, the various fruits on the native trees would be ripe, etc., etc. And they followed the stars. So a lot of my work in naturopathy has gone way further than that. I mean, when I was 13, my brother gave me a book on astrology and he only bought it because he loved the way, the art, he was an artist on the front cover. He didn't really see, oh, it's about whatever astrology is. He was three years older. And as I opened it up and worked out my star sign and everything, I suddenly went, oh my goodness, I now have a tribe. There's some other people on the planet who think like I do. You know, we were brought up walking naked, naked walking, well, often naked as kids, Um, living on a boat on a a huge waterway near Sydney. And, you know, we went to Aboriginal caves and found middens and um, my father was very heavily into nature and we were always barefoot and we fished for our food and we didn't have a fridge or anything on board. So we just abluted, showered and stuff in waterfalls, little trickles coming off the mountainsides. So I do think that the more in touch you get and the more you ground, And it's a big thing today, earthing they call it, take off your shoes, go to a park and and ground, release all the negative energy out of your body. Um, And of course on this island, nobody wears shoes. Why would you? It's warm all year round. And except for Ella, she's just pointing out, oh, I've got shoes on. Well, she was going to go to the kitchen um, in town and then we have to wear shoes. But it is a, a very healthy thing to do and Dr. Jensen again taught us about um, I can't think what he called it Um, but you would walk on the hot sand and then you'd walk in the cold water and then you'd run to the grass and then you walk in the hot sun sand paddle in the water and go to the grass and it's it's it was again to get the blood moving because all our extremities our head our fingers and our toes are the last to get circulating in good circulation. So the more you can do to keep that moving, the healthier and the happier you're going to be. Uh, Venus wants to know who has the talking bird. No, it's just everywhere. That's just nature. Yeah. I think think she thinks you have a parrot. There's packs of, it's paradise. It's as if we've all died and gone to live in heaven here where the last house by a national park and there's valleys and um, not mountains but very, very high hills full of birds birds and koalas and kangaroos everywhere, isn't there, Mum? And there's so few, you know, I've driven up here, as I said last time, I think it's over 2,000 kilometres, about 20 times now and down and also I've gone inland roads and... It's so sad. I'd love to see what America's like, but I've got a very big feeling it'll be the same. 
or most countries of the world, every waterway is polluted. Every lake has green algae on it. You know, we, we really are a bit of a pest, we mankind. We've got to learn to go into these. I mean, I'm not a fanatic, but, you know, we do need to recycle. We do need to stop packaging everything to its limits. And we do need to stop dumping, you know, full stop. Uh, so with, with the, all, the, all the remedies for anxiety, is that also very similar to depression or is that a, a down a different, I mean, obviously Everything. depression. All, all the mental conditions, in my opinion, are the B vitamins and there's a huge array of them. Um, so you can get a complex thing and all the physical body, if you're feeling sluggish, exhausted, is the C vitamin, C vitamin. We can't manufacture vitamin C in our body. That's why a green salad and a green juice, and as again Dr. Jensen said, is so important to have every day because we we need to get it externally. We can't make it. And um, so B's for the mind, C's for the body. And if you've ever had a surgery or an operation where you've been anaesthetized, your adren adrenaline just gets pumped out of you and it's sometimes for some people they'll say to you i've never recovered since i had the operation mm. because the body is lacking in c's vitamin c so that's why fasting you can reset your whole clock by just juicing and or even just steam veggies plain steam veggies every day for a few days i mean jake's been doing it on and off for years he'll do five days eating and then two days fasting what the golden child is perfect He's been doing it for years. He's better than me. He follows Yes, stuff. yes, blah, blah. Next question. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, uh, Midi, Midian UK wants to, I says, a uh, question for mummy. Has she ever heard of Wim Hof method and does she have an opinion? Wim, W-I-M and Hof. That guy that jumps in the ice lakes, ask her mm -hmm. that. Um, Midi, uh, he's a gentleman, is that the guy that jumps in the ice lakes? Um, I'll just scroll down to see. Uh, da, 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 da. That's very in at the moment, which is literally you jump in and you have to spend X amount of time and then come out and your whole body tingles. Is that what you meant, Midi? Uh, let's have a look. Give us a few... And there's a bit of a lag as well when we ask the questions. Uh, trip, running shoes are good. Da, 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 da. William Sterling, most critters around here are gone now. I think he may be in, the question was a bit quite far up. Uh, oh, sorry. The guy, no, I no, no, no. ring a bell, but I, it vaguely could be that person. I'm not sure. Uh, but I re also remember many times when I w was, you know, feeling down, you'd say, go and plant something. And it does make such a difference, doesn't it, when you Go get for birthed? Go get out into nature, yeah. put on your favourite song, Sp or listen as you do to one of your favourite spiritual teachings, and it changes your whole mindset instantly. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Especially it's not the now. to do it because it's the last thing you want to do when you're feeling depressed or down or sluggish or you have to force yourself. I mean, we have to help ourselves. We can't expect... That's part of the challenge of our modern day living. Everyone goes to the doctor, expects to get a script, they're going to pop a pill. Yeah, oh, and everything's perfect. Better. But we always say you need to recover twice then. First, your body's got to recover from the medicine and then from the illness. Because medicines, all medicines have side effects. They all affect particularly the liver, but all different parts of the body. I will say, when I moved to America, I have never been prescribed so unnecessarily. Like I'd go in for, a, you know, for some something that's not even anything, and I would be give, offered a plethora of pills, and I'd be like, "Why? Oh, are you feeling down? Can you sleep? Can you, you know, are you feeling anxious? Are you feeling?" I'm like, "I'm good. I'm good. Thanks." You know, I think I, it, it's it's they're very quick to hand out prescriptions here. That's one a big difference that I've noticed with doctors. In America, and they have to side effects, and a lot of people many. don't realize. I always suggest to people when they get any medication, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to look it up on Google, put the name of the medication in, plus side effects, and just know so that if one of those happens, 
they're dizzy or their heart is racing or something. It's not another illness. It's a side effect side of the effect drug. Than that. Well, I had to do a voiceover, Mum. I don't think I told you. And it was for some hardcore drug and, you know, like a prescription thing. And so you have to say the fluffy, lovely bit, you know, that it can help you sleep and help you do this. But the side effects are, and you had to do it quicker as well. So the side effects are, you know, uh, chronic depression, uh, suicidal thoughts. If you don't drive a tractor, you know, like I was like, what the hell? Like, why would you ever have this drug suicide? What? what? Right there, there seems there should be some alarm bells going off. But it's also every second ad, if you're watching like free to air TV here, like every and they put the volume up so loud. I don't know what it's like in Australia because I haven't been back. Like almost every second ad, if not every ad, has got to be about some kind of drug. You know, yes, you know. and the volume goes up from the program you're watching. Exactly. You can't sleep. You can't get a heart on. You can't get pregnant. Now you you don't want to get pregnant. You're know, like just so much stuff. It's just like look, just let people live. Anyway, I should shut up. Well, um, thing, my, if, if we have a gentleman in Australia who did a very successful show, I don't know if you have a version of it in America called My Kitchen Rules. Oh, yeah, something similar Where to that. People, yeah. You know, from all over Australia. And as I said last time, Australia is almost exactly the same size as America in, in actual landfill, but we only have 30 million people. You have 300 million, don't you? So, um, but they get some very interesting types on it. But if people are wanting a little advice about food and he has in the last 10 years um, been mainly paleo, which means going back to what our ancestors ate, sort of all the fruits, all the vegetables, all the nuts, all the seeds, any type of meat if you're not vegan, uh, but cut out all the carbohydrates. So that's a biggie because if you stop and think about it, 90% of us, you know, have a, have a sandwich or a bun or a croissant or a roll or we, we, we eat so much. And, of course, they're not the original grains anymore. They've all been made into hybrid form so they can grow faster and bigger and bolder and they're all sprayed so we don't have wheat flour anymore or we don't have spelt flour which was where they originally made hybrids from so if you can get back to the all the health food shops spelt, um, sell spelt flour or original rye grain breads which is so much better than your white fluffy and i know you love it um sandwich I mean, there's nothing wrong, but again, as Dr. Jensen said, it's not what you do one day a week that matters, it's what you do the other six. So sure, party and have your jockeys and do all that sort of stuff, They'd but balanced. you're doing it day after day after day. And the other wonderful thing is just to write down a food journal, which is boring, but write down what you do eat for a week and you'd be surprised. Most people just rotate the same type of meals day in, day out, week in, week out, year in, year out. And then they wonder why certain parts of the body are failing. Mm -mm. And it gets back again to that rainbow salad where you change the type of things you put in it and get used to them. And I've forced myself since learning this 40 years ago to eat foods that I wasn't that keen on, whether it's olives or herring or, you know. And then also if you look at all the cultures around the world, I mean, we spend a lot of time bringing Russian artists to Australia, all artists from all over the world, Mexico, America, Canada, um, African drummers. You see what they traditionally eat, yeah. get to know their flavours. And, you know, it's one reason why the French always <laughs> have garlic and the gravy juices on their roasts and stuff. Garlic. It breaks down the fat and, they, and the rosemary. They normally put rosemary. And in the juices is all the minerals that have been cooked out of the meat. So that's why they make the gravy. You look at traditional dishes, you'll find the answer to healthy living. And everyone's different. You might need a lot more of this than I do, for instance. Anyway, sorry, what I was saying was there's this gentleman from My Kitchen Rule called Chef Pete Evans. And he has oh, yeah. a, he has a um, Facebook page which is about to get deleted, I think, because he's coming out and speaking a lot of, conspiracy, which aren't conspiracies. We're seeing it happening around us, theories. He's supposed to be a chef. So every, he's already got several million followers. He's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. Um, 
And of course, they're all saying stick to cooking, Pete, except now the tide has turned and people are understanding as we go into more severe lockdown and stuff here in Victoria, in one of our states, that something else is going on. It's not just coronavirus. There's an agenda behind it all. So, you know, he's wonderful if people are interested in knowing more about what's going on in the world, firstly, but secondly, for diet. And I have seen the testimonials of thousands of people who had every disease dis-ease is all it is, symptoms, um, on the planet who switched their diet to paleo. They've chopped out half their carbs and wheats and what have you. He puts recipes up every day. He looks a million dollars. Um, he's nudging 50. And he's now just, they fired him off My Kitchen Rules because of his theories of what's really going on on the planet. Yeah. So that's okay. He doesn't care. He's yeah. he's too awake and too. It's become his passion now to share stuff with people. He started very meekly. He's getting bolder and bolder and bolder of pronouncing what's really going on. Yeah. So uh, Chef Evans, guys, that's C H E F Pete P E T E E V A N S. Have a look. You- they just asked what was the name See, again. My comments on his posts. <laughs> uh, so what about um, uh, Smiley Gidget was asking about chronic pain. That's a big one. Yeah, but from where? Uh, originally she was talking about having a major depression from a gallbladder issue, I believe, and then she was asking how do you, how do you relieve chronic pain? Where from, Smiley? We have to fix the cause factor. That's the problem. And you see, yeah. unfortunately, our medical system doesn't look for the cause factor. They just give you drugs or chop it out. To suppress, to suppress it. Uh, Juju Beans and Captain are asking, Chef Pete Evans, question mark. Yes. Yes. Good. They're yes. just clarifying Three. the name. Three words. Chef Pete Evans, because uh, he's uh, speaking, speaking out in Australia. Chef. Uh, I, I was going to ask you something about uh, not Pete so, Evans. Chronic pain is a big one, but we you really do need to go to the cause factor, and that's why when I did this course way, way back and, and now put thousands and thousands of people through it and seen everything that happens, one of the, you know, not for everyone because some people are already skin and bone, but for 80% of the population, we can afford to go a day or two on juices and lots of fluids Um, because juices if you stop and think about it you're having in one juice there's three carrots a bunch of kale an apple an orange a pineapple or whatever so you're actually getting more nutrients than you would than by eating a meal because it's also more easily absorbed it's not just a great big toxic bundle that has to be broken down by the gastric fluids and often all our gastric acids become upset as we get older Um, because unfortunately in Western society we've forgotten to eat. We we, we have sweet, sour and savoury taste buds but we have another five. One of the most important is the sour. No one really sits and eats a lemon but you can put it in your juice. And then we've got the the dami which is the um, bitter. So there's another formula that's been around for donkey's years that I have every evening of my life. It's called Swedish Bitters, and it is bitter. I put it in with Sleepy Time Tea, Celestial Seasoning Sleepy Time Tea. Firstly, it allows you to calm, and it switches you over from the active sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system. That's the one that runs our, we don't run our heart or our gallbladder or our what have you. So that, you know, to again, to help you calm, they're wonderful. There are some natural painkillers. In fact, you do realise that 90% of drugs were originally made from herbs. Right. And what they done, during World War II, all the English children were sent out to the countryside to pick the wild-growing herbs to make into powders Remedies. and to send to the, those in the fields, the war fields. 
Um, the challenge is that what the physicists and biochemists have done is they've extracted from the herb or the food or whatever it may be, the spice, um, the active ingredient for a particular thing, like Valium, the drug, which do you have that in America? Yeah, so that's Valerian, right? It came from, yeah, a very bitter herb called Valerian. So you can get Valerian tea, which I always say tastes like razor blades. It's very bitter. Or what what the biochemists did and the pharmaceuticals have done is they, they extracted the active ingredient that helps you switch off. But even worse than that, these days, 90% of drug, drugs are made synthetically. So they don't, there's not even any of the original herb original or anything, herbs. let alone the fact that they've taken all the natural partners away that were made. That's why we have problems with opioids and stuff, you know, to have the whole poppy. They're highly addictive. They just extracted out the part that is going to have the effect on the human body, and the human body can't recognise it. So it, that is why I said earlier, you know, if from every drug you need to recover from the illness and then the drug because the body doesn't can't if it had its natural partners with it. That's why I love herbs and herbal medicine. There isn't a day of my life I don't eat herbs on everything. We chop hasn't, them on hasn't, everything. Hasn't there been copious amounts of times because you? Uh, it, it, I remember even going to some what was it evening primrose or something where there's been many herbs that can cure things that they've put on they've blacklisted in australia yeah herbs and remedies yeah like well, i remember going to a few things with you like not protests but rallies and stuff and and was it evening primrose what was it a few different things Humphrey is the one that was pretty well banned worldwide on totally false studies i mean what's going on in these medical journals i'm telling you it's pretty frightening um, because the studies designed around the vested interests and have been for years. So, you know, uh, conspiracy theorist Jenny and millions of other people know that who pays for the big pharmaceutical studies? They do. If they don't like the results, they do them again so that they do like the results or they get rid of certain people that are going to be affected a certain way. So, yes, many many um, herbs have been banned. I mean, comfrey was a cure-all. It helps the mucus linings of the body. It um, was originally called knit bone uh, because if you break a bone, it'll help bones knit together about a third faster than they normally would. Yeah. And you saw that poor dog, Rambo, your little dog. I don't know, you left him at the farm when you went to university, but if you remember, he fell out of the car and broke his bone and the vet told us it, um, it was a university hospital that he'd need three operations oh my gosh. and skins and, um, uh, you know, you know what they put in, metal rods and that he'd have to be sedated for six weeks and he wouldn't be right for six months. So I said, oh, well, let me go home and think about that. So I talked to a couple of my friends. And I was gardening the next morning. He said, keep him still, whatever you do, because if he walks on it, he's going to do more damage. And I heard this rustling, and I turned around, and we had this, ma I've got a picture of it, massive comfrey bush, and the dog was working his way through the leaves, finding the tips, and eating it himself. What? He was oh, eating Rambo. And within two weeks... He was walking on, he ate, ate every day from a comfrey bush. That's I've amazing. I've never seen it since, I, but it was certainly proof for me. And he never needed pins. About two months later, I took him back to the vet. We got him x-rayed. His bones were in perfect alignment. How, I don't what? know. But we were very naughty. We didn't, um, we did put him in a cage a lot of the time. But you kids wouldn't allow that, so half no, the time he was let out when he shouldn't have been, yes. <laughs> but, I mean, um, anything I have found over the years, I've seen it for myself. So yeah, I, I don't talk stuff that I haven't um, actually witnessed, the healing power of this or that or the other. And in my opinion, if everybody 
chopped up, which I've got the kids doing here. Elle is not as keen as Jasper. Jasper puts herbs on everything now. Um, you know, if you're having a rice dish, chop a variety. There's, you know, 300 herbs. They're cheap. If you stick them in a pot plant or in your garden, um, they will just keep giving to you. You just take a small amount off, chop it over everything. That is having a medical, healthy, wholesome cocktail at every meal. You're getting new vitamins, new minerals. Uh, Mum, we've got to wrap it up because it's it's been an adventure. But I want to show the photos. Um, so I'm just going to pop over it for one sec to put them up. I'll tell you which ones they are. Let's have a look here. Mum and Sash. Is Ella, is Ella cruising around because she wants to do a dance or is she just chilling? She's chilling. She's... Um, okay, I didn't... I didn't know whether she was wa warming up. She's doing a design. <laughs> she's painted her phone cover in mm -hmm. white, and now she's doing a very beautiful design on it. Oh, nice one. Okay, well, Ella, I want you back on the show one day, please, to do a dance and some singing. Can I get a promise? Hello? Here she comes. Here she, is she comes. Gonna, is she going to do it? Okay, I can't see her right now. I'm just quickly showing the photos. Is she? Are you going to do it, Baba? Sure. <laughs> Good girl. What now or later? Another time. Another time. Okay, cool. All right, here I'm just showing these photos. The first one is okay. of the hi the hideaway. I love you. First one, one is the hideaway on 250 acres. We can see from the aerial view that it took, um, it was, had not mountains, but very high hills and bush all around it. So it was um, on all three sides. This, this is a photo of Lynn and you, and is that Jensen? That's Dr. Jensen, yes. That was way, way back. And I also had the pleasure of being invited to his farm in San Diego, where he had they were called sanitariums, where people did the same course that we were doing in Australia years and years before we ever started. Um, and his book, which I think I sent you the cover of his book, which is Yes, I'm still, looking at that now. But you'll see in it there was a man who, there's pictures in the middle of the ropes <laughs> that come out, um, and it outlines the whole of the course. But... You'll see one of the pictures is a man who had been told he'd have to have his legs amputated because he had ulcers that had eaten into the bone. And he came to Dr. Jensen as a last resort. And from fasting, cleansing, herbal tonics, you'll see the recovery in just seven days. And he's got both of his, it was around the ankles, he got these horrendous ulcers. And we had someone very similar at the hideaway. They actually got a, a, a ulcer from swimming in barley. They're very hard to get rid of. And uh, we used to pack it with honey and comfrey. Uh, and here's a photo of the barn, Mum. That's where we used to hold all our various meetings. Um, <laughs> it and looks like a, a cult. <laughs> this is well, where we would gather. We so, such a diverse... We had quantum physicists. We had channels, channeling information from uh, inverted commas, other planets. We had Hopi Indians, Aboriginal elders. We had horticulturists. Um, you name it, we had it. Uh, people came and just shared their stuff, and we just let people know they were on. If they were interested, they'd come. So we must have presented that was my bedroom. Pardon? I was just saying that was my bedroom, the, the Crystal Palace. Remember the fairy room? One yes. sticking out over the pool. Yeah. Yes. And then I'd have to move when courses came. Yes. And up. <laughs> bye bye. Mummy's like, got a big money. Great. Uh, no, I'm just and of course, Jake was brought up amidst all of that. Oops. So oh, he yeah, was worked right. on by everybody. Both and the physiologists then... and massage people and herbalists. And... Because he was a tennis player, as I think we mentioned once before. And did it incredibly well. He was under 12s champion doubles player in Australia and um, was listed in the singles as well. So, but because he's like Jasper and Ella, he, it's, 
went through growing spurts and he was hitting balls back at 120 kilometres an hour from men and he was still 12, 13, 14. All these um, tendons, muscles, and he also got several fractures of his ankle, wrist bones, because it was they don't train that way anymore, thank God. They've learned not to put younger kids through so much because so many of them get injuries and after years and years of work can no longer, you know, play or dance. On that note, <laughs> I love you, Mummy. Sorry, I did pull on a bit. Sorry, Daddy. No, no, no. It's all fantastic stuff. It's all great. I've got to clean the house because the in-laws are coming to ha- have a day at the house tomorrow, so I've got to go scrub some floors. <laughs> and make it all fresh for them. Um, all right. Well, we love you so much. Oh, c- can uh, can we where where uh, can people find you? You've got a, be- a beautiful Facebook page, and you're working on a book right now for new people yeah, in, no, the, look, in the chat. I've got my general. A few people did go want to come onto my personal page, but I have got a public page, which I sent you the link. I don't know if you've got it there. It's Natural Health by Jenny Edgley. I sent you the link with the photos yesterday. I, I don't have it right. And I, I also it. have a really, as I said last time, old, so embarrassing website called Jenny Edgley Books. So that's Jenny with a J-E-N-I. Um, Jenny and E-D-G-L-E-Y books.com. Have I am you got a, a link to your, your page, Jenny Edgley Books? Dot com. And do you have a link or do you have like your social network links on your site, Mum? Because you should. Jake should have lined you up. Natural Health by Jenny Edgley. They're linked. It does? Oh, good. Okay. Oh, I don't even, this is awesome. Okay. Here. I've got, I'm putting the link but in the But as I said, room. because I'm into, my feeling is we're going through a great awakening in the world. And we're coming back to all that is good. Um, I do put a lot of stuff on my pages and Sometimes I haven't put as much on natural health lately because I've been warned, not allowed to say there is a cure for coronavirus when there are. So, um, you know, you're censored and blacked out and fact-checked and all that sort of stuff. What's the Facebook link, Mum? I'm just looking it up. Natural Health by Jenny Edgley. Natural Health by Jenny Edgley. Thank you. Sorry, I was um, <clears throat> inundated by. Sash sent me like three hundred photos, <laughs> so I, I there was a lot going on. <laughs> I was Love our to photos. Here you go. Here's the link to Mum's public uh, page. Facebook page. Please check then, it out. And then and you can go to it. the Edgley books from that, which is all about. And there's pictures of the first nutrition book, and then there's stuff about the fam. There's everything there. And it's the worst website you've ever seen in all your life. Sorry about that, guys. Get the golden child on it. No, we said that last time. Everyone has gone to Jake since he was 12 years of old with every problem with the internet. Like me? Can't we run a Twitch show? He's just over it. He does. He's very patient. But, I, you know, I wouldn't ask him to do that. I can do it. It's just the time. And I haven't been passionate about changing it. And I also got so many people on it now that I don't know how to convert them over to a new page. I don't know what I'm doing. I know how to write a book or put out a magazine, but I'm no oh, good. With I can help you, Mum. I can help that you. Kind of stuff. All right, my darling. Well, I'm very proud of you and all that you're doing. I can't, I can't praise you enough for you, how beautiful a being you always have been, and. This year has been a really tough one and I'm so proud of you holding your head up and getting on and following your passion. Thanks, Mama. I love you. I love you. Sending you big, big cuddles, lots of good energy. And see you hopefully after the elections. Bye. Very different. Much better, I'm praying. I'm praying. I think we'll see you before that. (laughs) <laughs> I love you, mummy. Bye. Have a gorgeous. Love you guys. Have a great night, evening, morning. Bye. Bye. There's mama. Love.
love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. There you go. Double double the sesh. Double the edgely. Double down. Triple down with Jakey here as well. <clears throat> uh, so to my beautiful subscribers, can we meet on Monday after the uh, stream? Because I've I've got I didn't realize we'd go an hour over to that tonight. <clears throat> But I didn't want to stop because it was all very interesting information. So do you mind if we do our Discord session on Monday? Um, and we can all hang out for the subscribers. I'd like to meet on Monday because, as I said, the, the in-laws are coming to, to hang out at the house with Sky tomorrow. So I want to make it all nice for them. Love you guys so very, very much. Thank you for being so welcoming to my beautiful family. And uh, who is going? Oh, yeah. Who is going to be on Twitch? Twitch on Monday. Have you have you made your vote yet? Monday we have Twitch tri uh, Tribe Highlight Day. So put your your put your vote in. Uh, and I'm going to prime a. Who wants to do Monday? Juju's voting monkey. Midi's got monkey. It looks like it's going to be monkey. You better be ready, Miss Monkey. Also, I have to give a huge shout out to Monkey as well because. I've had so many challenges with the Dragon Con recording and I literally battled with it all day, well, for the last three days because it was in a weird file and I, I tried everything, Jake tried everything, Jed tried everything and I begged Monkey, I said, I don't know what to do and she converted it in a heartbeat <laughs> and sent it back. So then today I got overly creative and added a slight, a plethora of photos and videos and now the, the file's having a hard time again. So monkey, you might be getting another call. Anyway, we'll see you on Monday, beautiful monkey. I love you guys so very, very much. Here's a little teaser to hashtag. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, check it out, check it out on beautiful dust and uh, sending you lots and lots of love. All right, bye. Welcome to your new celebrity franchise. Open the door to the rest of your life. Four, three, two, one, ready, go. Oh, I'm gonna level over you. X, what is your status? If you want to be successful, love what you're doing. Submit. 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 Product flash. No, you are the best friends. You're bringing social media to the next level. Be famous. I wish I was you. The ultimate influencer. The ultimate celebrity. The ultimate you. You. You will have all the friends you've been dreaming of. Make their choices for them. You have opened the door to the rest of your life. Fame. Fame is just a heartbeat away.